When I say the word pumpkin, you probably think crisp fall day, jack-o'-lanterns, or pumpkin pie. We have an extremely narrow view of what pumpkins are and what we can use them for. They're so important to 17th and 18th century North America for Native Americans and for the colonists that we really shouldn't forget them. Pumpkins have an extremely long history, both here in North America and in Europe. And they were using pumpkins in Europe for peasant food. They were not considered high cuisine at all, maybe even animal fodder. They were looked down upon as a rude and crude kind of food. But in North America, they were venerated by the Native Americans. They thought of them as part of the Three Sisters, corn, beans, and squash. They were what they were surviving upon, even more important to them sometimes than meat. These three sisters come together to complete the nutrition of a particular meal. At the beginning of the 17th century, when Europeans come over to colonize North America, these Native American pumpkins become an incredibly important part of these colonists' nutrition. They really couldn't survive without them until their European crops could really get a foothold. So for years, it was pumpkins that really helped these colonists survive. That was the kind of thing that could grow and grow easily. And they got this concept from the Native Americans. This idea of eating pumpkins did not come from Europe. They didn't think that they were good, wholesome food. But they found out from the Native Americans that that was the only way they could really survive. One of the great things about these pumpkins is that they store. We think about pumpkins in a very constricted time frame. We think October, maybe November. We don't think about pumpkins again. But in this time period, you could store pumpkins for months, maybe four or five months. They would last you well into the winter. You just need to keep them from freezing. So the Native Americans would dig pits, they would line them with bark, and then store these pumpkins underground. And they would be able to get them out later on and cook them. They could also store them by drying the pumpkins. So the time of year that the pumpkins are ready to harvest is a perfect time of year when there's a lot of sun and the air can be very, very dry. And so you slice up these pumpkins and you can spread them out in the sun or even spread them out on a rack over a fire and you can dry them out and they can get very, very dry. Pumpkins are, are mostly water. You can pound it up almost into a powder. And that powder you can use, you can rehydrate it later on. You might use it in a soup or even turn it into something like bread. Now I said these weren't very popular in Europe, especially earlier on in the 17th and 18th, maybe 16th century. They were considered peasant food, but they do show up in some cooking. You will see them especially in French and Spanish cookery. They're using them in something like a pumpkin soup. So they stew these in water until they totally break down, smash them into a puree, and they make a nice, wonderful soup. And it's also likely you'll see them in early Spanish and Italian cookery. You'll see them in Dutch paintings in the 17th century, but always in that very primitive peasant cooking situation. When I was trying to lock down what's going on with pumpkins, especially in North America, you don't just find them in cookbooks. In fact, there aren't any North American cookbooks till 1790s. So pumpkins don't show up in cookbooks, but we find them in literature, people talking about pumpkins. And in the 17th century, they were talking about how important these pumpkins were for the starting of the colony. They ate them so much that their, their brains were pumpkin blasted. And we also see Europeans making fun of Americans for eating pumpkins. In Europe, pumpkins were just peasant food, right? Why would anybody eat a pumpkin? But it turns out that the North Americans were proud of the fact that they could survive on pumpkins. There's a book called The Dictionary of the Vulgar Tongue, which has slang terms from the late 18th century, like 1785. And the term pumpkin was someone from Boston. Why? Because they ate pumpkins all the time and were proud of it. In fact, Pumpkinshire was the Boston area. Pumpkins were also looked down upon because they were considered a lazy man's crop, kind of like potatoes. Potatoes, you shove them in soft earth and you come back at the end of the season and you dig more potatoes up. Pumpkins are even better. 
You take one little pumpkin seed, you plant it in a mound of earth and you make sure it's damp. And then at the end of the season, there's a giant pumpkin vine and it's got 20, 30, 50 pumpkins from it. You can almost survive half a year off of a single pumpkin vine. In our time period, they didn't really separate squashes and pumpkins out too much. They considered them all basically the same thing. And most of the pumpkins they talk about being kind of green. They say they come in all kinds of shapes or even all kinds of colors. They had white ones, they had green ones. And sometimes it said when they got ripe, they turned orange. So we know that their pumpkins probably looked something like ours, but they might consider this just as much a pumpkin as something like that. So how do you cook pumpkins? Today we talk about pumpkin pies. Really, they're more like a pumpkin custard pie. But they could cook pumpkins in any number of ways. They sliced them up and fried them. They would also roast the pumpkins, maybe in an oven or under the coals. They would boil and stew the pumpkins until they turned into a soup. They might use the boiled water that you get from the pumpkins to make a wonderful moist bread. And they also did pumpkin pie, but not quite like you expected. Here's a direction for a pumpkin pie, and I've seen several descriptions of this. This is William Alice in 1752. He says, pumpkin pie. We pare and cut the pumpkins in slices, and then lay the slices in a glazed earthen pot with salt between the layers of them all night for extracting out the watery juice. Then chop them with the like quantity or less of apples, and with sugar put into the crust and bake. Pumpkins save the apples, and some like it better than apples alone. So it's really an apple and pumpkin pie all together. We're gonna make a quick pie crust today. Whole wheat flour, butter, and cold water. And the ratio is three to one, flour to butter, and then just enough water to get it to hold together. You can buy your pie crust at the store, but be brave, you can do it. Make your own pie crust. Here's a 17th century reading of an English person exploring in the Florida area. He says, about an hour before sunset, we got to an Indian plantation. This was the first place we saw anything planted, being full of pumpkin vines and some small pumpkins on them. But the Spaniards were too quick for us and they got them before us. Growing up, pumpkin pie was my favorite pie. It still is my favorite pie. So I'm really interested to see what this does because I've never had one that was made anything like this. So it's fun to take one of those 18th century recipes, try it today and see how it compares. That is really, really interesting. It's got a very soft texture. It's not that pureed sort of custard texture that you're gonna get from a standard pumpkin pie. The pumpkin is very, very smooth. Even though we didn't pre-boil it or anything, it turns out really smooth. And so we have a wonderful pumpkin pie flavor with that twist of the apple in there, which brings in the sweetness. It turns out great. I continue to be fascinated by topics just like this that seem so simple and clear cut. But when you do the research, you find out, yes, even something like the lowly pumpkin was a survival food they couldn't live without.